narcs are notorious for financial abuse because it grants the ultimate control. Money helps them to gain and maintain control in a relationship. And we see this a lot in society. It's really not an accident that people turn out this way as individuals because you see in society at large, a lot of times money equals power and power equals control. And so narcissists basically apply that same approach to their personal relationships and they use money as an object to manipulate and draw people in. Other people's money also gives them leverage to elevate their lives at the expense of others. It's the power dynamic of choice for the narcissist. Their underlying motive in doing this is to keep you dependent and ensure that you never have more power than them. They have got to maintain the upper hand in the relationship and the power dynamic. Now, yes, for some of these people, it might be subconscious. Maybe at a subconscious level, they feel threatened by or jealous of your stability and they don't know why or your abilities and they don't know why. They can't really articulate there's something unsettling about this and it's causing them to act in ways that are motivated subconsciously but whether it's conscious or subconscious the narc needs a target a victim who is unstable and kept that way so you might start out stable, you might start out with assets, but the time they get, you know, done with you, you're not, you're not anymore, because they need, they need to go in for the resources, and like a parasite, drain you of them, to the point that you become dependent upon them. So uh, some of you, though, maybe, maybe you start out in an unstable situation. And again, there are narcissists that really prey upon people who come from bad families, who are going through a hard time. They're in a vulnerable spot in life, which makes them easy to exploit. And then they can get away with being who they are without any fear of you leaving because you have no support system. You have no friends and family who will help you, who are either willing or able to help you. And this need to have someone in their life who is unstable and kept that way is the reason why they're never going to help you actually attain and maintain security. That's a personal threat for you to get the upper hand. That's their fear that you would get so empowered that you don't need them anymore. You could leave them if they misbehave or God forbid you treat them the way they treat others. <laughs> Now, they might promise to help you attain and maintain security. They probably will. They make a lot of promises. But then that they never actually empower you unless it somehow benefits them. When it comes to how narcissists handle money, I've seen two extremes. Where they either never save money or they hoard money to weaponize it against others. Well, either way, it's weaponized against others. And this has just been my personal experience. So, you know, comment down below if you relate to this or if you'd like to add to it, maybe another perspective that I've left out. But in my personal experience, I found that the covert narcs tend to play poor. They're really not. It's a facade. They're financially strong. Uh, they act weak. But in reality, they are hoarding to weaponize resources against you. Whereas the overt narc might play rich. They're really not. It too is a facade. They're financially weak. They act strong. When in reality, they waste and squander resources. Again, weaponizing resources against you. So let me explain. With a covert narc who's playing poor, they only give money if they can control the outcome, the terms of use. Now, they might actually have visible resources, but they try to play humble and like, well, I don't really have a whole lot. And you know they do, but they're trying to play that card. But yeah, they're going to only give money if they can control the terms of the use of the money. And then they're going to complain about how much money they've given others because they feel that giving money to others entitles them to run their lives. And here's the kicker. They may have made that money off of 
the back of the very person who's suffering. I talk about this more in my book. <laughs> but, you know, on on the example of the overt narc who's playing rich when they're really not, well, this person can be very childish, selfish, inconsiderate after they've spent their last penny, maybe even yours. And they'll even say things like, I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, you know, plain innocent, right? I, I didn't think it would turn out this way. They act like they're unaware, but like I said before, you know, in, in other videos, they are aware. They just don't care. <laughs> they also have magical thinking. Very childlike, right? Again, but the, the magical thinking is that money is just going to auto-magically come to them to fix their financial problems. Somebody's going to come in or some opportunity is going to come in and fix the fact that they've been withholding funds from others or that they're incompetent, reckless, selfish in handling their funds. Well, something's just going to make it okay. It'll work itself out, you know. <laughs> that's that's their magical thinking. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't work itself out automatically, then they're going to blame the victim, the target, and say, well, you didn't deserve the money anyway. It was mine. They don't care who caused the problem. Personal accountability responsibility is not part of their program. Another thing about how narcs handle money in terms of communication is that they communicate in a way to purposefully leave you in the dark or mislead you. They may not actually outright lie to you. They just omit key information. Or they say things in a way that might have a dual meaning. And they're hoping, intending for you to misunderstand them. They're purposefully trying to mislead you so that you draw false conclusions and then you come back and you're like but you told me this and i'm like oh i didn't say that you misunderstood or you know i didn't say that in that you know they left information out and then you're like well why didn't you say that well you didn't ask these are again this is all gaslighting but it's in the context of money you know many narcs are irresponsible when it comes to money they can be habitually broke or bankrupt and not embarrassed by it at all they have no healthy sense of shame now they might have enough shame to make sure that their false projected image is not one of bankruptcy or brokenness right but deep down inside even though they're not advertising the fact that they are habitually broke and bankrupt deep down inside in their personal relationships they think it not strange that they keep going through these cycles of loss and if you're just meeting a narcissist and you're getting the story of they're bankrupt they're broke well it might coincide with the last discard it might have to do with some victim story about their ex. Oh, she took me to the cleaners. She's, you know, took me to the court for child support. Poor me, I gotta pay for my kids. You know, whatever, fill in the blank. The reality is that they're irresponsible behind a facade of success. And they use money oftentimes to support an addiction. It can be a number of things. I mean, I'm not just talking about the obvious drugs and alcohol it could be gambling shopping porn spending it on race cars gaming partying you name it you name it food addiction oh we could go on because these people they have poor impulse control they go to extremes they don't know how to self-regulate i'll talk more about that uh, in a future video but the reality is, you know, in terms of the irresponsibility here, they don't care about debt. They don't have a fear of debt oftentimes, or at least to them, the consequences of debt is not their problem. If their behavior gets you in trouble, like they didn't pay the child support, they don't pay the health insurance for the kids that is required by law, well, that's your problem. 
And the authorities could end up on your doorstep asking you questions. And they're nowhere around. You know, let, let's say they have warrants. <laughs> they show up looking for, for the ex on a warrant, but they end up arresting you or running your background, your, your ID. Or let's say it's a, it's a court situation about child support. You know, you're called into court to try to address the fact that they didn't pay child support. But while you're in there, the court now starts interrogating you about why you haven't paid for health insurance. Because, well, sweet Jesus, how are you going to pay health insurance when you don't get child support? So I, this is the kind of stuff they do. They escape and evade accountability. They leave you there holding the bag. And... Unfortunately, in a lot of cases, it's guilt by association because right or wrong, a lot of people tend to think, my gosh, if you're hanging around with Riff Raff, are you Riff Raff? Oh, yeah. Don't ask me how I know. Another thing about narcs with money is that they discard healthy boundaries. And again, this is because, like I said earlier, they lack healthy internal controls. They control everybody but themselves. They can be very calculating, very manipulative, very cunning. Yet, they are unable to tell themselves no and delay gratification. These people often are gluttons. They're overly self-indulgent. Yes, could be with food, could be with drinking, shopping. Uh, I'm not saying all people who overeat are narcs. Please do not get this conflated, okay? I'm just saying it. it is one of the telltale signs of um, somebody who basically goes to extremes and they don't exercise healthy balance and self-controls. Some of them can also be sociopathic, Masters of circumventing society's rules are leveraging the rules to their advantage. It's kind of the way that I explained earlier about the irresponsibility and leaving you there holding the bag to answer to their irresponsibility while their MIA missing in action. Another thing about narcs and money, they can often steal. A lot of times, Yes, lying and lying and stealing go hand in hand. So they will take money from others, but then they'll act as if it's not stealing. And some of you are like shocked at this behavior. Like what in the hell is going, what is your problem? Well, here's what the problem is. They're entitled. If you confront them on taking money that you did not agree to giving, they will rage. They'll fly into a fit of rage they'll retaliate, they will then discard you. And in, in, in some cases, like, I'm done with you. They'll walk off, they'll leave. Even if they have to walk on foot for miles, I've seen some really extravagant discards, okay? You would not believe. Getting out of a car on a freeway in traffic because they're done with you. Totally irrational, crazy behavior. Again, this might be only reserved for the people who have a smidgen of sociopathic behavior in them. But yeah, you confront them on stealing behavior that they feel entitled to. Oh, they're going to fly off in a fit of rage and retaliate. And if they don't discard, they might, you know, they're definitely going to get into a devaluation of you, criticizing you and, you know, God forbid, getting violent. They're going to blame you for stirring up strife. I mean, how dare you confront me about taking your money? I deserve it, right? This is the attitude. Uh, they will accuse you of nitpicking them as well because they feel absolutely entitled. And they'll come back after the whole rage session is finished. They'll come back acting as if nothing happened, that there was no betrayal that occurred, that no consequences should apply. And this is when they need relief. Maybe when they're hoovering you, they're trying to suck you back into their life. Uh, 
they are wanting some kind of financial or psychological relief in their life. And when they come back for this, they behave as if there should be no consequences because no betrayal occurred. And I'm gonna give you an example. A narcissist who has not paid child support for five years and all of a sudden wants to come back and resume relationship will hold up, wait a second, why? What's in it for me? You're still not paying child support. You know what I'm saying? But they don't understand that they've got the cart before the horse, that things are out of order because a betrayal occurred and there are now consequences. They've betrayed trust and they need to now earn trust back. And they might offer to do favors for you or whatnot. But like I said to this one arc, why would we want you to do that for us? We don't trust you. We could just get somebody else to do it for us who we do trust. I mean, how did you not know that this was going to happen? Well, I don't know what I was thinking. Right, right. Okay, so... Five years, five years of no child support, but you're going to come back in like it never happened. Oh, well, no, no, honey, you don't understand how much suffering has occurred because of these five years. How much loss, the domino effect in the family because of your irresponsibility. And you're going to come back and offer favors as if we even trust you to perform favors. They don't understand trust. They don't know how to rebuild it. And even when they do, it is a big game to try to win your trust for the purpose of betraying it all over again so they can get back to doing things the way it's always been done, which is maintaining that upper hand. If you want to watch the next video in this series, then click here. Or if you want to watch my narcissism playlist, click here. Also, if you're interested in my book on narcissism, check it out at Amazon, Audible, Kindle. Links are down below. Till next time, thanks for watching, commenting, liking, sharing, and subscribing.